This is the coolest device that I've ever reviewed on my channel. This is a V2L that allows you to charge and power a range of devices using the battery on your car. That's right, you can charge all of these devices that I have in back of me using this guy. This is from Tillyard. Now, some people are skeptical. They think that I get paid or that this is an advertisement. No, <laughs> this is a cool product. This is something that I am gonna use a lot. I have the pleasure of reviewing it for you. This is a product review. Tillyard sent this to me in the mail so that I can test it. It has a 120 volt AC outlet for North America and it will charge up to two kilowatts. What does that mean? Up to 16.7 amps. That's a lot of power. Now this is the first time this is showing up in North America where you no longer need to preheat your battery to use this. It has electronic circuitry inside of it that negotiates with the car as if it's a CCS third party charger and then it allows you to then charge your battery. But it tricks it and pulls the energy the other way. Now the first question I had was, does this void my warranty? Because that just doesn't sound good, right? Well, the answer is no, it does not. And this is clearly spelled out on Tillyard's website. So I encourage you to check the link down below. And if you consider buying this, it is pricey. So make sure that you use a discount code. And my as I'm editing this video, my friends at Tillyard increased the discount to 28% until the end of January, 2026. This is the best discount I have ever seen. So head over there and use Technique to purchase this guy. I get a little bit of commission out of every sale and that's about all that I get out of this. Look at all this stuff that we have here. We have floor heater, we have a shop vac, I have a TV. Imagine you go camping and you can watch TV on the big screen. I have a miniature refrigerator, I have a microwave oven, I have a leaf blower, an electric leaf blower, a hedge trimmer, I have an air fryer, a lamp, and a toaster oven. I'm going to be powering all of these devices using this V2L, and then I'm gonna save the best for last where I use my Tesla Model 3 to power a Cybertruck. That's right, you can use this to rescue other cars that run out of charge, and that's probably my favorite part. This is a great emergency charger to have inside of your car to help other vehicles. So let's jump straight in and I'm gonna show you exactly how this thing works. Now, in order to use this V2L, you need to confirm a couple of things. First of all, your car needs to support the CCS charging capability. All models from 2022 support this. If you're unsure if your car has this or not, make sure to go into the software menu and then tap on the additional vehicle information. The third item down will mention if you have this feature in your car or not. If you do not have this, you can go to a service center and pay about $330 to have it added. It's a little circuit board that they add for the communication, and then they'll give you the CCS adapter as part of that service as well. The second thing you need to do is to make sure that your charge limit is higher than what your battery is currently set at. So as long as that slider is higher than your current battery level, you'll be able to use the V2L. First things first, there is a long cable that will come with your V2L. And the next step is you're gonna plug in this outlet here. Using this V2L may not work on the first try. What you're going to do is open up your charge port without anything plugged in. You're going to insert this into the charge port and then you're going to take the adapter here, plug it into the hole. The green light is going to turn on and then you're going to press the button. You're waiting for this to turn blue. There it just starts flashing. You want it to flash rapidly after this is flashing rapidly, it will turn to a green color. Wait a second. This light will stop flashing quickly. I just heard a little sound and now it's flashing slowly. After that, you can remove the cable and you're ready to use the V2L. Okay, inside of here, I have two sausages that I'm gonna heat up with this. One minute, here we are heating it up. This is a 1000 watt microwave oven. There we are. This looks so good. Imagine camping and having a microwave oven. Mmm, that's really good. And here's a basic lamp. And here's a power vac. 
Oops, <laughs> I didn't like the inrush current on that. Really cool to see that this has a contactor in here, a safety contactor that it will shut itself down when it pulls too much current. All right, the sun went down and it is getting cold out here. So I'm gonna plug in the heater. So there we have 80 degrees Fahrenheit coming out of here, nice and toasty. This would keep me really warm in the winter. Obviously your car can keep you warm, so this doesn't really serve a huge purpose, but it's nice to know you can use this if somebody wanted to stand around outside, for example, and stay warm, maybe their legs if they're camping. If you don't have a campfire, for example, this kind of serves the same purpose. You sit there and keep your legs warm while you're sitting outside. Okay, call me crazy, but I'm plugging a hedge trimmer into a surge protector. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. This uses quite a bit of power and I'm skeptical. It's probably gonna kill the lights here. Here goes nothing, guys. Let's see how this works. Oh, wow. All right, so, wow, this, it powers the hedge trimmer. When I plug this into my outlet at home, the lights kind of dim, but look at this. I, there's no interruption whatsoever. Pretty cool stuff. In here we have a toaster oven being powered by the Tesla. And this one should come as no surprise, but the V2L allows the battery to power a small refrigerator. And here we have an air fryer being powered by the Tesla. And we have a leaf blower. Let's try this out. Now I've tested this in the past and I had some issues going to the highest level. So this leaf blower says that it is 120 volts, 12 amps. So we're getting close to that 16 amp. However, if I slowly kind of step start it up, because there's two speeds on this, if I start it at the lower speed and then ramp to the highest speed, we might be able to get this to run. And we've got our entertainment here on the TV in the back of the car. You can watch movies, all sorts of fun stuff here. And here we go with the shop vac, this time through the surge protector. Not sure if this is gonna work. It's probably gonna kill the lights here again, but hey, we'll see what happens. <laughs> all right, so it does not like shop vacs, just FYI. And for the ultimate test, I have a DeWalt saw now this is going to be very heavy duty we're talking about 15 amps 120 volt ac i'm unclear if this is actually going to work or not i power it up by hitting this button here so just like the shop vac i'm going to speculate that it's going to have high inrush current and it will probably kill the circuit and that's the best thing is that this thing protects your battery and anything bad from happening. So let's go ahead and try it out here. It's starting, the saw is moving. Okay, and here's a miter saw. This is 13 amps, 120 volt AC. I found out with that other saw, it just wasn't turning on fully. So if you plug it into normal AC outlet, you get a lot louder noise, it, it ramps up, it's really powerful. This is less powerful, but I'm unsure about the inrush current. This probably will be the same as the shop vac. So let's test it out. We may trip this here. It's ramping up slowly. And we tripped it. <laughs> so it started getting up there, but it couldn't handle it. So it safely shut itself down. All right, we're saving the best for last. Let's jump over to the Cybertruck. Okay, here we go. I've got the mobile connector connected to the AC outlet on here. I'm gonna bring the plug over here. I just pressed the button and I heard a sound. It opened up some, ah, here it is. There's a, a little cover here. So, okay, great. I'm gonna plug it in and we're gonna see if it starts charging. 
blue. Great, let's go into the car and see if it's charging. This is awesome, it's working. It is working. <laughs> I'm excited, that's great. Look at that, we have right here, ladies and gentlemen, a Model 3 charging a Cybertruck. So imagine you're on the highway and you find another car, they're stranded. This is a great device to kind of rescue them, at least give them a little bit of juice to get to their destination or a pit stop or somewhere else that's safer than sitting on the side of a busy highway. We're gonna take a look inside of the app to see what it shows us, and then we're gonna go inside of the screen on the Cybertruck to see what it's showing as well. It's 11 out of 12 amps. We have 122 volts, and it's charging at one kilowatt. It's charging at between one and two kilowatts. A little trick that we found is if you change it from percentage up here by tapping on the number, it'll go to the miles, and now you get your rating here it's one mile per hour so that is really really slow i'll have to say but hey it's better than nothing what we found was that this v2l was charging the cybertruck at about one mile per hour now you may think that's really really pathetic but it is a cybertruck you charge a lot slower with a cybertruck compared to a model y or a model 3. Now, I thought about reversing it, where I put the V2L in the Cybertruck and then charge my Model 3. However, it turns out that the Cybertruck does not have a 12-volt cigarette lighter outlet at all. It's a 48-volt architecture, so you can't even power the V2L to get it initiated. So, I thought a little bit further, and I thought, okay, well, what happens if we just charge the mobile connector this has nothing to do with the V2L, by the way, but if we plug in that mobile connector, what type of range are we gonna get as far as miles per hour on the Model 3 just using a Cybertruck? And that's one great benefit, by the way, of having a Cybertruck is that you have a rescue vehicle as it is. You don't even need a V2L. So we're gonna test that just to compare and see what we're gonna get out of the Cybertruck battery. And it is interesting because it's not going through the port where you normally would charge, but there is a 220 volt outlet or 230 volt outlet on the Cybertruck as well as a 120 volt outlet. So obviously in this case, we're gonna be using the 120 volt. And I'm gonna guess that it's gonna be the same as charging in a home garage, for example, where it's gonna be five miles an hour. Here's a close up of what you get on the back of a Cybertruck. Look at this, you get a NEMA 1450 outlet. This is what's used to power like your dryer or your washing machine. We're gonna test the 120 volt and you know what? I, since I have both plugs, we're gonna test both. I wanna see what the maximum miles per hour you can get out of the Cybertruck to charge another vehicle. Here is with the 120 volt outlet, you see we get 12 amps, 117 volts and it says one kilowatt. It's basically the same as what we saw before with the V2L. I'm gonna tap on this battery and change it there. And it says zero miles per hour. Kind of surprising because I figured it would at least show two or five. From a standard outlet, you would get around five miles per hour showing up. And here is with the 230, 240 volt. Looks like it's pulling 228 volts. 32 amps, look at that, 18 miles an hour. That is great. Only three hours to charge versus 24 plus hours. So this is definitely the fastest and best way to charge another EV is by owning or borrowing a Cybertruck. So there you have it, whether you're going camping or on a family vacation, or you just want to power random stuff around your house while it's sitting in the garage. Let's say you have a power outage. This is a great kind of item to power. As Tilliard's website mentions, 90% of your devices inside of your house using your car. So this is a nice kind of backup generator for your home in case you get a power outage. You would need a long extension cord and hopefully it's not the middle of winter so your cord isn't uh, creating any drafts coming in through your garage door, for example, but this is a great product for a wide range of use cases. If you are interested in picking this up, like I said, it is a little bit pricey. Make sure you use a discount code like TechGeek at checkout, and be sure to check out my other Tilliard reviews down in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think down below, and I hope to see you in the next one.